Control of the air underpins all air operations. It enables freedom of manoeuvre across the maritime and land domains and safeguards the fixed infrastructure of the space and cyber domains. Although maritime and land operations can be conducted without achieving control of the air, the risks can be significant. There are three degrees of control of the air. Air parity. This exists where no force enjoys decisive control of the air in either time or space. Consequently, both friendly and adversary land, maritime and air forces may encounter significant interference by the opposing air force. Parity is not a standoff, nor does it mean that air operations have halted. Air superiority. The degree of dominance in the air battle of one force over another, which permits the conduct of operations by the former at a given time and place without prohibitive interference by the opposing air force. Air supremacy. This is the degree of control of the air where an opposing air force is incapable of effective interference. Control of the air is not a permanent state and constant activity is required to achieve it. Offensive counter-air missions target enemy air capabilities as close to their source as possible. Proactive in nature, they seek to dominate an adversary's airspace, preventing the launch of threats against our forces. Defensive counter-air missions, also known as air and missile defence, are generally reactive in nature and seek to nullify or reduce the effectiveness of enemy air and missile threats. There is an expectation that Western air power will achieve a high degree of control of the air for future operations. However, this cannot be assumed due to the increasingly sophisticated capabilities of our adversaries, which have the potential to deny friendly control of the air both home and away. The importance of control of the air cannot be understated. In the words of Field Marshal Montgomery, if we lose the war in the air, we lose the war and we lose it quickly.